Yo, what it do, man? It's your boy LP, and A, hey, April is here. The month that we get to celebrate what the world calls Easter, and we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday. Long story short, humans aren't perfect, so God had a plan. God sent the Son, Jesus died for all of our sins, but the story doesn't end there. Three days later, he rose again and lives forever, and that's why the resurrection is a big deal for us. Okay, that's a whole lot of details, but I, I know that's long, but I'm trying to make it short, but it's all good. <laughs> Just keep coming back each week to learn more. What Jesus did for us is ultimately an act of humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Our April memory verse is Philippians 2, 3, which is, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourself. Here's today's bottom line. As you listen to today's Bible story, I want you to keep the bottom line in your mind. Then, see how you can connect it to your personal life. Now let's see what our friend has to say, and I'll see you after the Bible story. Happy Easter. Let's praise and worship God. Then we'll hear a Bible story that shows us to celebrate because Jesus is alive.
Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about humility while we take a look at the most terrible and most amazing event in history. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. And we're also celebrating the most amazing example of humility ever. Easter, how are you celebrating? I practice my crafty skills. Oh, Easter tree, yo, oh, Easter tree, how lovely are your branches? An egg tree. I love it. What are you doing to celebrate? My mom makes these really awesome hot cross buns for Easter breakfast, but they take forever. So I found a super quick recipe for resurrection rolls. Why are they called resurrection rolls? I think we gotta bake some to find out why. Well then, let's bake it. Step one, open a tube of crescent roll dough. Oh, can I do it? Be my guest. I love this part. Okay, just wait for this. <laughs> what now? Step two, take a marshmallow. <laughs> then dip it in melted butter. Then you're gonna wanna roll it in some cinnamon sugar. I like my sugar with sugar. <laughs> Step three, place each marshmallow on the wide end of the dough. Then you're gonna wrap it up tightly Then tuck in the ends. Do we do all of them? Yep, and you can roll them up if you want to. That's it? Well, they have to bake for about 11 minutes. Well, that's just enough time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in John the fourth book in the New Testament. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent his very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he traveled from town to town, teaching and healing. People were ready to make him king. But when Jesus came to Jerusalem for the Passover festival, the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. At a special Passover meal with his friends, Jesus shared one way people would know his followers, by their love. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe. The story we're telling today is epic. It includes the very worst and the very best moments ever. So strap in for the ride. After the Passover meal, Jesus led his friends across a valley to a garden called Gethsemane. While Jesus was praying, a group of religious leaders and soldiers entered the garden. They were led by one of Jesus' closest friends, Judas. Jesus knew why they had come, and he didn't try to run, even though he could have called angels to defend him. Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Jesus actually allowed the soldiers to arrest him. Terrified, his friends ran away or followed at a distance. Even Peter, who had promised he would rather die than desert Jesus. Jesus was brought to stand before the father-in-law of the high priest, and then Caiaphas, the high priest himself. Witnesses told lies about him. Aren't you going to answer? Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. From now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One. Jesus had just claimed to be God's Son. It was what the religious leaders were waiting for. But they couldn't sentence him to die, so they sent him to the Roman governor, Pilate. Pilate questioned Jesus and couldn't find that he had done anything wrong, so he brought him out to the crowd. I find no basis for any charge against him, do you want me to set him free? The mob wouldn't listen to reason, so Pilate had Jesus whipped to try to satisfy them. Soldiers wrapped a purple robe around Jesus and placed a crown of thorns on his head to mock him. 
Then Pilate brought Jesus out again. Here he is. I don't find he's done anything wrong. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate didn't believe Jesus was guilty, but he also wanted to keep the Jewish leaders happy. So he sent Jesus to be killed by crucifixion. Jesus even had to carry his own heavy wooden cross through the dusty streets of Jerusalem. Outside the city walls, on the barren hill of Golgotha, Jesus was nailed to the cross. The soldiers placed him between two common thieves. Though most of Jesus' followers were hiding, his mother Mary and several others huddled below to see what would happen. At noon, darkness settled over the land. At last, Jesus cried out, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and died. The earth shook, rocks split wide open. It was the deepest, darkest moment the world has ever known. God's very own son had chosen to give up his life. A follower of Jesus named Joseph from Arimathea took Jesus' body and laid it in his own tomb cut out of rock. A heavy stone was rolled across the entrance. Through the darkness of Friday and Saturday, Jesus' friends hid out, afraid the religious leaders might come for them too. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb with special spices to place on Jesus' body. When she arrived in the garden, she discovered the stone had been removed and the tomb was empty. After the terrible events of the last few days, Mary had no idea what to think. She ran to the place where Jesus' disciples were staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and John raced ahead to see what had happened. The tomb was empty, just as Mary had told them. The linen cloths that had been wrapped around Jesus' body lay limp on the stone. Confused, the men left, but Mary had reached the tomb again. In the growing light, she leaned down to look inside, tears clouding her vision. This time, the tomb was not empty. Two brilliant angels sat there. When Mary turned away, she saw a man standing nearby. Woman. Why are you crying? Through her tears, Mary thought he must be a gardener. Sir, did you carry my Lord away? Tell me where you have put him. Mary. As Jesus spoke her name, Mary was overcome with joy. She threw herself at his feet. Teacher. Gently, Jesus lifted her up. Do not hold on to me. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. All the darkness of the last few days was swept away. Mary rushed to find Jesus' friends. I have seen the Lord. Jesus' return to life doesn't just mean that he was alive again. It means we don't have to be afraid of death anymore. It means that everything wrong will one day be made right again. It means that anyone who believes in and follows Jesus can have life forever with God. The end. Now that is a story. With an incredible ending. So, what's our part in the story? It's so important to really look at what Jesus did. He's God's son, and yet he chose to become a human and walk here on earth with us. He experienced everything we do joy and sorrow and pain and temptation, yet he never did anything wrong. And then he chose to give up his life for us. When we believe in Jesus and that God raised him back to life, when we follow him, God takes Jesus' perfect life in place of all the wrong things we've done. God promises that death won't be the end for us. Because of Jesus, we can live forever with him. I feel like celebrating now. <laughs> Me too. Me three, for sure. See you next time. So here's the thing. Celebrate, because Jesus is alive. Bon appetit.
Mm. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing in here. Yep, the marshmallow is gone. Oh, like the empty tomb on Easter morning. I knew you'd get there. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Oh, really good. What an amazing lesson from the Bible about humility. Jesus chose to put us first so that we can be part of God's family forever. If you want to be a part of God's family, it is as easy as A, B, C. You have to A, admit that you've sinned, that you've missed the mark. You have to B, believe Jesus died for your sins and is alive today. And you have to C, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, it's just that simple. So let's pray. Say, dear God, I ask that you forgive me for my sin. I believe that Jesus died and that Jesus rose and is alive today. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, man, look, it's just that simple. Look, if you or your child received Jesus today, we want you to tell us about it. Just text Faith Chapel to 94000 or scan the QR code that is on the screen so we can connect with you. Thank you for spending time with me on today. And I'll see you next week as we talk more about humility. Happy Easter. This week we celebrate Easter. Jesus is alive. Jesus conquered death and is alive. Our elementary kids are learning that Jesus gave us the ultimate example of humility. Through his life and death, Jesus showed us how to serve others and put them first. We invite you to check out this week's family activity guide. You can download it from our Facebook parent group, our website, or follow it from your phone. Inside the guide, you will find amazing activities that make it easy to keep growing in God's word with your elementary kid. It helps you to talk about today's Bible story, it gives you an activity to complete together. It guides you through prayer and so much more. Decide when and how you want to use these great tools at your fingertips, and you will be amazed at how much your elementary kid is learning and growing in their faith right at home with you. We have one amazing in-person Sunday service for kids. If your family is interested in attending in-person service, please join us on either our Birmingham, Alabama, or Columbus, Georgia campus. For more details about the in-person service on the campus you attend, special days when we worship together in the main sanctuary as a family, and much more, please visit faithchapel.net forward slash family for more details on what's going on at our church. Enjoy your day.